Never thought a reporter could consider themselves a success until someone threatened their life. Me? I'm very successful. Get out of the street before any more of them catch wind of you. Look, I'll open the gate and you get in here quick. I'm gonna let you in the bunker. Don't make me regret that. Excuse me. Something up? Well, yeah, but it's nothing bad. Just what you said about Nat. I've been going over it again and again in my head, and what you said was right. Family's too precious. What kind of life is she gonna have if I never go near her again? It's just... Sometimes it feels like the only things I've got in life are Nat and the paper. Having someone I can count on, someone like you, it's meant a lot to me. Not a lot of people want to hang around with the nosy reporter. Yeah, but you're my kind of nosy. <laughs> you're the exception. I haven't exactly made a lot of friends in this career. I just wanted to write the things I thought were wrong. And when Nat and I first got to Diamond City, there was a lot of wrong. Crooked guards, lousy infrastructure. <laughs> There was a hole in the exterior wall that was patched over with a bookcase. One bookcase. That's it. I started the paper more as an act of desperation than anything else. It turned out I wasn't the only one who wanted things to change. After the first couple of editions, people may not have agreed with what I said, but everyone was listening.
Still, a lot of work to fix that town. Oh yeah, but it's come a long way. When that first edition hit the stands, I felt like I'd finally done something worth doing. But afterwards, things... things changed. People didn't want to talk the way they used to. It seemed that overnight I'd gone from being Piper, friend and confidant, to Piper, the nosy snoop. A lot of folks, they haven't treated me the same since. It started to feel like the only person I could count on was my little sis. You can count on me, Piper. I know I can. You're not afraid of me like everyone else. I was sure that the paper would be the best thing I ever did in my life, but being here with you now, now I don't know. I've needed someone like you in my life for a long time, Blue. I just never expected I'd actually get them. So thank you for being the friend I can count on. It sounds to me like you're interested in becoming more than just friends. Oh, I, I mean, <laughs> I'd be lying if I said I never thought about you that way. Not that I'm always thinking that way. It's just... Blue. I'm loud and pushy and constantly getting in over my head. Why would someone like you ever want someone like me? You don't need to be flawless, Piper. You're perfect for me. Perfect, huh? <laughs> That's, uh, that's a new one. Well... <laughs> well, I think you're perfect, too. <laughs> Goodness, Blue, I... I don't know what to say. You're everything I could ever ask for. Come on. Let's not keep the world waiting. Son, did someone drop you on your head as a baby, or did you have to work what to get a this bunch stupid of junk? That was stupid of me. I know. I wasn't thinking. No kidding. You weren't thinking. Wandering around like some aimless child looking for their lost balloon. Luckily, I've got Reba here to help me crack those crabs wide open. Isn't that right, girl? Who's Reba? Are, are you talking about your gun? She's not just a gun. She's top of the line. Best gun in the Commonwealth. Made her with my own two hands. Oh, where are my manners? Introductions. Barney Rook, commander of the Salem Volunteer Militia, at your service. I'm also the quartermaster, sergeant at arms, and scribes for all official meetings. This here is Reba. But you two already met when she saved your life. Thank you, Reba. And thank you, Barney. No thanks needed, sir. The Salem Volunteer Militia is at the service of the people of the Commonwealth. Duty is its own reward. Reba says you're welcome. Now, I'd love to sit here gabbing all day like a couple of housewives. But we've got some work to do. And by we, I most definitely mean you. Before you showed up, the Meyer Lurks had been mostly quiet. And those that were a problem were quickly dispatched by my turret defense system. Since things had been quiet lately, I took the turrets offline to conserve ammunition. Obviously, they need to be reactivated. And that's your mission, soldier. I'm going to continue to hold down the home front while you go reactivate the turrets. What's in it for me? Look, don't tell Reba, but I've been working on a sister for her in my spare time. I'm thinking of calling her Reba, too. She's in the back room. She's not as tough as her older sister, but she's all yours if you help me out. Reba would probably get jealous anyway. The turrets should be easy enough to find. They're up high in strategic locations around town. Just be careful. All your noise probably woke up more crabbies and other mire lurks. The town could be crawling with them by now.
Yes. That one worth reading? Hey. Where to? Yep. Nice.